Order is a young adult series set in this world of mystery and fantasy and magic, but how does it hold up against other shows in the same genre? and today we are talking about the first season of the new Netflix series The Order. The story follows Jack, a new freshman at Belgrave University who will do whatever it takes to get into the school's secret society, the Hermetic Order of the Blue Rose, to avenge his mother's death. But things aren't as they seem as Jack gets thrust into the underground world of two very different secret societies, one based in magic and the other with werewolves. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you like my videos and of course please drop down in the comments so we can talk about The Order. What do you think of this show? guys, let me know your thoughts. Let's start out with the good. So while the show started off pretty weak, I have to say I really think that it picked up as it went along and it really got better towards the end. The Werewolf Collective was a big highlight of the show to me, especially Randall. Not only did they bring this kind of like bonding element to the show that felt very family like, but they also brought a lot of the humor to some of the more darker, dramatic or more horror aspects of the show. I think that while the tone could be a little bit wonky at times, there was definitely this really interesting kind of campy humor that shone through that was actually really wonderful. There were some pop culture moments as well that I really liked. You know, they referenced Degrassi, Marvel, even This Is Us. And if this show gets a second season, I would love to see them hone in on that more, kind of embrace that campy humor as like the tone of the series. I think the set design and the location itself was also really beautiful. You know, we're set in Canada, and if you know me, I am just somehow drawn to Canadian projects. I don't know why, but I love them. It also filmed at the University of British Columbia, where a lot of TV shows and movies actually film. They filmed The Magicians there, they filmed some stuff for Supernatural there, just a lot of shows. So I think that could also be why this show definitely felt familiar in many aspects because we've definitely seen this location before. And I do think that there were definitely some standout scenes in general in this series when Jack and Pop use the necrophone to talk to the dead, when they have that like kind of slow-mo bar fight scene, that was pretty funny. And there was also this really badass scene with Lilith, aka Killeth, I thought that was so funny, um, when she was really coming into her abilities and just knocked it out of the park. And by the end of the show, you know, I definitely think that you do kind of get invested, you do form a connection with these characters. On the other side of things though, we do gotta get into some negatives. I have to say, honestly, the order did feel like a bootleg version of the magicians. You know, it kind of has a similar setup, we're in a college, in fact, they literally film at the same university. There was a lot of drinking and cursing going on, but for some reason in this show, it felt immature, it felt like they were overcompensating. As if this show was the younger sibling of the magicians, like the younger sibling that copies you and is trying to be cool, but it just doesn't really work. And I think this show, especially in the very beginning of it, just started out really slow and kind of cheesy and just wasn't coming together. Especially as someone who, like me, I can sit and I can watch a show in a day or two and be done. This show definitely took some time for me. It took a full week for me to really kind of get more invested in it and get through it. And, and that usually is a sign to me that a show is kind of missing something. Things also just didn't really make much sense in the kind of magical world of this show. You know, the order, we don't really learn that much about them other than their magical society. They don't really teach us necessarily the rules of the magic other than, you know, everything comes at a price. So at times it just felt like everything was very like loose and fast and there wasn't a real structure. There were also some times when the stakes kind of felt pretty low and the magic was being done for really shallow reasons, like with Gabrielle and Brandon who were doing magic to like pay for lattes or get out of taking tests. You know, they've already learned that magic comes at a price, but they are doing all this pointless magic and hurting people for no real reason, you know, to get out of a test. Like, you're in college. That's part of college. And those two characters specifically for me felt like watered down versions of Margot and Elliot from The Magicians. I also think the actress who played Gabrielle had a lot of potential and her character could have gone somewhere really interesting and they like sort of touched upon it but like didn't really like fully commit and go there. And so I'm hoping that if they come back for a second season they really like utilize her and kind of give her just something more to do. They also brought in Jewel State, who you guys might know from Firefly, and I just felt like her role didn't really go anywhere. She plays these twin sisters with a dark streak, but in the end she ends up giving up on her mission to get the necrophone back and just disappears. Like she just like leaves and never comes back. I didn't really get what the purpose was of that story, they just kind of dropped it. There's also this really weird scene with a Grand Magist Edward Coventry, who he's kind of trying to get something out of the temple 
temple magus Vera Stone and the way that he does that is using this magical amulet to tell her what she wants to hear and what she wants to hear is that they have this connection over their children having peanut allergies, which is like not true on his end. That was the catalyst that led to her giving him this like magical resource that he needed. What? That's so ridiculous! No offense to anyone with peanut allergies, but like... That was just such a random moment. And I think in general, just a couple of the casting choices seemed off to me. I think the biggest one that stood out was Edward Coventry. I just did not believe him in this role as this Grand Magus, this, you know, magnetic guy that has all this power. I didn't see it. I think that, honestly, he seemed really creepy. And even his costumes didn't really make sense to me. You know, he's the head of this magical organization. You would think he'd have, like, some elegant or extravagant extravagant wardrobe and most of the time he's wearing like jeans and like cotton long sleeve shirts. They could have done something a bit more exciting and that showed off his power. And like I said, I just don't think this guy was like the perfect fit for this role. I do want to dive into the cliffhanger at the end of this season and what that could mean. We are going to get into some spoilers here so you have been warned. So this season ends with the Order and the Knights coming together to defeat Edward Coventry and you know they win, everything is awesome, everything is cool when you're part of a team. But then the Order decides to step in and wipe everyone's minds. So now Jack doesn't even know Alyssa, he doesn't even know his own name. What is this gonna mean for the future? They clearly came together with the werewolves to stop something and now I'm kind of thinking why did they do this? Why are they wiping their brains now? And then there's this scene with the new Grand Magnus, Vera, where she has this book that they supposedly destroyed so I don't know, is she gonna be trying to take over that power now? Is something else gonna come into the mix? And I think something that the Order kind of overlooked in wiping the minds of the Knights is that these are not normal students. These are werewolves. So at some point in time, they're going to turn into werewolves. They're going to figure things out. And I think it would be really cool to see maybe like the werewolf hides that are within them, maybe have some like flashes of memory stuck to them somehow so that when they turn into the werewolves, maybe they'll start remembering things that happened in the first season. I think that'd be pretty awesome. You know, there was a lot that went on this season that is kind of like sad to see be reset, like, you know, Lilith and Randall and, you know, the relationships between different characters like that, but I do think it could be really interesting to see how they handle like this new situation and these relationships and what will happen when they eventually remember everything. I think there could be definitely some new and interesting dynamics that go on. The other thing I'm hoping that they're going to get into if they do get a second season is kind of like that idea of good versus evil because I think it's a pretty big gray area in this show, you know. I still don't really understand if the order is good or bad. Yes, sometimes they've used bad magic, which has signaled the werewolves, but, you know, we also get to see Alyssa use good magic to help save Randall. And on the other side of that, you know, the werewolves are sometimes killing innocent people who are possessed by bad magic in order to stop the order, or just people that happen to get in the way. So, you know, there's definitely this gray area where, like, I don't really know who's good or bad, or maybe they're gonna kinda dive into that idea that nobody really is. When it comes down to it, I think The Order is a show that, honestly, it does start out pretty weak. It is not a strong start, but it does get better over time. This is a show that you really need to give it several episodes, so if you're not into doing that, you might not be interested in checking this out. There are definitely some standout moments and some standout characters, but when it comes down to it, I think there are other shows in this genre, like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina or The Magicians, that are just more worthwhile to watch. You know, this show is not breaking any boundaries, it's not changing the fantasy genre in any way, but I do think that if you have some downtime and you're like, I don't have anything to watch, give it a try. You might like it. Make sure to check out my other television show reviews. I've done a lot of Netflix ones that you might enjoy, and drop down in the comments to join the conversation. I can't wait to talk to you guys about The Order. See ya!